G'day there. Uh, thought I'd share something with you that came in the mail today. Uh, what it is is a spiral head cutter for the mold thicknesser. I uh, got this from a company called uh, Woodcraft Supplies in uh, Brisbane. Uh, this video won't be a how to fit this spiral cutter into the uh, thicknesser. There's plenty of videos out there showing you how to do that. Uh, this will be more based on guys in Australia that may have the DeWalt pipe thicknesser and uh, be considering upgrading uh, to something that's a spiral cutter or segmented uh, sort of cutting head. Uh, so it'll be more based along those lines for uh, guys to make up their own mind. Uh, at the end of the video, I'll explain my reasons for going down this path rather than selling this unit off and uh, buying another bench top thicknesser, which is uh, the most common ones that we get in Australia here. Uh, they're not a true spiral head on them. Uh, they're segmented cutters uh, and they're only two solid. Uh, yeah, so I'll uh, do a DB test now with the old blades in it. I know it's really loud, but just to give me a comparison once I get the uh, segmented head in, to see what uh, difference there is in the uh, noise level. As you uh, saw and would have heard, the difference between the old uh, straight high speed steel blades against the spiral uh, cutter head with uh, tungsten blades in them. The outlet I've got on my phone uh, just going to give me a rough idea of uh, the uh, drop in the, uh, the sound level, and that was uh, 14 decibels uh, lower. 14 is not a huge number, obviously. But I can tell you standing in here, uh, you can tell the difference. Hopefully, the video will give you a bit of an indication on the, uh, the drop in the sand level. Uh, how long did it take me to fit the hip? Uh, an hour and a half. Uh, comes with what I call idiot proof uh, instructions with photographs, uh, step by step take out that screw, take out that bolt, take off that circuit. Uh, straightforward, easy, uh, no frustration at all, which is a good thing. Uh, one thing that I would never have done with the old straight cutter head in it, uh, with the high speed, speed steel blade, was run an in-grain chopping board through the thickness of uh, I've run this through the spiral head, a matter of a sacrificial block glue front and back. It's small passes, uh, comes up fine, beautiful, uh, which is a good thing, especially you know, doing in-grain chopping boards, you can get a little bit of movement during the glue up, timber expansion, so forth. Normally it's a hell of a lot of sanding to get it down flat and smooth uh, going through here. It's gonna uh, save the time in that area. Uh, yeah, so as far as fitting the head, easy, straightforward, nothing uh, too stressful about it. So why did I go down this path and uh, not just buy a new unit, sell this one off? Uh, I've had this unit for a few years now, Previous one that I had about 10 years ago, same capacity, same size. Uh, I've burnt the motor out in that for uh, a lot of use and probably overuse over uh, uh, working the unit. So, over the years that I've had this unit, I've probably, I think I bought three sets of replacement blades for this cutter head. 
they are double sided so you can spin them around. But uh, what I've done on a number of occasions when I've used both sides and they've become dull, uh, to get one more lifespan out of it, uh, I have a timber block that I uh, sit the blades in and run the water stone over the top just to uh, polish the edge back up and get a little bit more use out of them before they were completely uh, uh, dull and uh, in time to buy a new set. Uh, so, so I'm continually buying these blades at $70 a set. Uh, why don't I look at uh, selling this unit off and buying another uh, bench top unit with uh, a spiral hip in it, a spiral cutter. So I thought I'd look into what's available in Australia. Basically, there's three companies in Australia, guys know, that sell uh, machinery um, for woodworking. Carbotech, Timbercom, Timbicom, sorry, and uh, here at Forbes. Uh, so I was looking at uh, the Carbotech and the Sherwood uh, models. Basically, they're, they're the same, pretty much the same as the DeWalt, as far as you know, 330 wide and the capacity by 150 in height. They also, the three units, sorry, the two, uh, the Carbotech and the uh, Timbercon and the Sherwood and the DeWalt have the preset stops from 3.2 mil up to about 32 mil. So the same in that department. Uh, motor size, uh, this is the DeWalt's 2.4 horsepower, Carbotech's 2.4, the Sherwood is uh, two horsepower. One feature that the Carbotech unit has that the DeWalt and Sherwood doesn't have is uh, cutter head lock. So when you set your cutter head to whatever height thickness you're running through, you can lock the head, can't move during any uh, use with the vibration and so forth. Uh, the Sherwood model has a granite base in it, which the Carbotech doesn't, and obviously the DeWalt doesn't have that either. So basically they're all, you know, each unit's got its pluses, uh, yeah, a little bit varying a little bit for each one of them. So, uh, why I went down this track and bought the, the cut head for this rather than buying the uh, Sherwood, because so I was leaning towards the Sherwood because reasonably it comes with uh, tungsten blades. The Carbotech has high speed, uh, high speed steel blades in it. As a standard model, you can upgrade that unit to the, the uh, tungsten blades that cost you more. Uh, so the Carbotech and the Sherwood unit are both $900 to buy. Uh, so I was leaning towards the Sherwood unit uh, purely because of the plant base and the uh, tungsten blades. In it. So what I was thinking of was uh, selling this unit off. I thought maybe I'll get $500 for this unit. These things in Australia, I think, retail now for about a thousand dollars. So if I got five hundred for that, means I had to put four hundred dollars towards uh, buying the shoe unit. And, uh, one of the concerns that I had with either the Carbotech or the shoe unit, it's not a true spiral cutter. Uh, still giving you a straight cutting motion, but just in smaller sections. The blades are about 30, 27, 30 mil wide. Uh, whereas the spiral cutter gives you a more, a better cut. Uh, it's less stressful on the motor because it's a shearing motion all the way across rather than a straight chop down like a chisel uh, onto the uh, workpiece. So uh, that was one of the concerns that I had uh, with both of those units. And all, all I was doing was I was upgrading that to one of those units and still having the same type of cutting motion but just in smaller sections. Uh, with Sherwood, I would have had uh, tungsten blades in it, which is a good thing. So, why did I go down this track? Uh, basically, because this unit, the spiral, it's a true spiral, it comes with tungsten blades. They're four sided blades that are in that unit, where the Carbotech and the Sherwood, uh, they're only two sided. Uh, so, what did it cost me? Uh, that uh, cut here cost me $570 to deliver here. Whereas, uh, as I said before, the upgrade to the Sherwood, if I got 500 for this, I would have had to put $400 towards purchasing the Sherwood. So, nuts and bolts of it, it's cost me another $170 more than the Sherwood unit. But I've got four sided uh, cutters, tungsten cutters on it, and uh, it's a true spiral head cutter. So, 
Uh, I'll leave this gives you a better cut, less stress off the motor. Uh, and all round, it's probably, my opinion, better option to go. Cost me a little bit more, but uh, time will tell. Uh, it come with, you know, as I said, you know, some spare cutter heads, which was a bonus. Uh, they do have a nick one. Uh, rather than rotate around the place or whatever. Yeah, so uh, the guys in Australia, I hope you've uh, found this beneficial. Uh, we've got this DeWall contemplating changing up to a uh, segmented head cutter that's available in Australia. Here's another option. Uh, cost you a little bit more, but uh, I think it's a, a better way to go. In saying that, I'm not bagging the car, particularly the Sherwood units. Uh, you've got one of them, you've got a good unit. Uh, if you haven't got one of those, or sorry, if you haven't got a thickness, uh, you know, either one of those two units uh, suit you quite well. But be prepared uh, if you're running hardwood timber through them, uh, the high speed steel blades in them, uh, you're not going to get much life out of them. If you're just running pine, Oregon, cedar, you'll get plenty of life. But uh, running Aussie hardwood, uh, Jarrah, uh, Red Gun, Murboo, don't expect to get too much life out of the stone or out of the high speed steel uh, blades. Uh, you're better off having a unit with tuck, at least tungsten blades in it, you get more life out of it. Uh, yeah, so basically, in a nutshell, that's it for this one. Uh, I'd like to thank you for watching. Uh, until next time, take care and boo